Hey, this is Nicholas from Mixtime Magazine here with the wonderful Mia Dyson. Hello. Uh, we're here to talk about a new record and how we got to a new record after all these years. Album number six. Hello. Hello. How, how are you doing? I am doing great. I was waiting for the microphone. <laughs> um, I want to start with... Where did you start with, with music? Was it guitar? Was it vocals? Was it? How did it come about? Well, my parents are big music fans, and it certainly, I think, started with them playing me records from when I was very little. And then my dad is a guitar maker also, so I watched as he emerged from the workshop with these beautiful instruments, um, and they would lay around the house, and that was just really normal for me, but I, I never kind of thought to play guitar, and I started playing piano for some reason. Um, it just, I, th I think for my little hands at the time, it was like something I could get, get my hands around. Sure. Um, and then a girlfriend uh, started playing guitar and actually got my dad to make her a guitar. And I was so jealous. And I was like, why don't I have my own guitar that my dad made? So for my 14th birthday, I got my dad to make me a guitar, and which he obliged. And I fell in love with playing guitar. I just realized that you could learn all the songs that you love on the guitar. and imitate other artists and um, you know co covers basically I, I learned how to cover other artists and uh, and that's when I started singing too because I'd learned the song on guitar and I'd like oh, okay I'll try and sing it as well and then it wasn't until um, I, I sort of started writing songs that I that I realized you could create your own and you could find your own voice too it's funny because we as musicians we all start with emulation be it we assimilate from everything that's around us so who were the kind of formative artists for you? Yeah well funnily enough one artist that probably doesn't strike people as soon as they hear my music was Prince like I would try and imitate his voice <laughs> especially the really high like you know falsetto stuff that he does yeah, yeah, and yeah. Um, the, the the Prince in the New Power Generation record uh, yeah so um, him like artists like uh, the band and um, Little Feet, like a lot of Roots American stuff. Leave that on Helm. Leave on Helm, Helm. favourite drummer. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, Richard Manuel, love his yeah. voice, you know. Um, and then, like, Bonnie Raitt was a guitar hero of mine, one of the few women guitarists that I knew about totally. as, as a 13, 14 year old. And um, Chrissy Hines. And um, so, yeah, they were like vo voices that I imitated back when I was. Oh, and the. Weirdly, not weirdly, but the Commitments album was a big way into yeah. like all of that beautiful soul and R&B. And then I went back and listened to like the original, uh, you know, artists who made those records. Cool. Um, but the Commitments has a lot, you know, a lot to um, be thankful for, <laughs> getting me into R&B and soul. Uh, when, when did it start becoming a thing where it was like, cool, okay, album one, like I'm gonna kind of work on it being an actual like livelihood or me take, me taking a step towards music properly? Yeah, I, I wrote songs for many years that I thought were awful and, and, you know, I mean, I just loved playing music and it didn't occur to me, I think, until the first time I wrote a song that I actually thought, like, this song's not bad, like, I could play this to people, maybe, maybe. Um, that I, I kind of started to go, oh, like, have this feeling of, wow, maybe I could do this, like, maybe this is something I could pursue um, and I think I was like a minute into my arts degree at Melbourne that was already part-time and I had like one hour a week of, of uni <laughs> to do um, and I, I thought okay let's let's keep writing and and I think I've recorded my first record around 21 22 and um, which you know like I I think I'm a sl I'm a slow learner and I think I've I like to think anyway that my songwriting has gotten better with age. Sure. <laughs> You've honed your craft as it gone along. Exactly. Versus like I at the time I was like, Van Morrison released like Astral Weeks at twenty two and I was like, Yeah, like bad luck. The worst thing, and you referenced Prince before, and Prince is like both the most inspiring but the most demoralizing because he did like four albums in three years or something like that, that prolific area like a time where he was like bam 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 bam. And every musician's like, well, 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 I, I can't do that. How do you do that? Like, exactly. Exactly. Compare and despair is the term. Totally. <laughs> but we, like, 
they were also like he was in Paisley Park every day of every year so he was like I'm just gonna keep making music all the time anyway I can go on a big rant about <laughs> friends um, the new record is coming out this coming month it has a peculiar title and I'm not gonna say it because <laughs> I said it before and I got it wrong um, so there's an interesting title behind it I want to know the story about where it came from how it ties to the rest of the record certainly it's called if I said only so far I take it back and we purposefully left out the grammar leaving you in the dark about what the hell that means and I think leaving it open to interpretation but um, it's a line from the song open which is perhaps the most kind of punky aggressive song on the record and it's it's really a call to um, be courageous you know it's it's really like I, I set a whole lot of things like if I set myself a limitation in the past I'm gonna try and you know break through it um, to empower. Mm -hmm, yeah. exactly like you know there's it's like only so far you know I'm only willing to go this far yeah. and then going like no, no I'm even though I don't want to even though it's scary even though it's uncomfortable um, trying to push past that um, self-imposed mostly um, limitation sometimes the best music comes from sitting out of your comfort zone exactly exactly and that song the way that we recorded that like I ended up I think um, I felt really encouraged by the band and the, the, the producer Ben Tanner like to experiment on the guitar in a way that I hadn't before where um, even though, like, I mean, I've always played rock and roll music, like, um, on guitar, I think I've always had this, like, oh, I've got to get it right. Like, I can't, I can't, like, make mistakes in public. And, and that limitation, I think, really means that, you know, playing it safe. And, and so, um, in, in more recent years, and particularly on that song on this record, um, I mean, all of the notes are wrong. Like, it's, and it's great. It's like, that that is that is kind of a spirit of a certain kind of music where you where you step out and um, it's it's perfect it's perfect for the song and like you're never more vulnerable when you're sitting there and like tapes rolling as it were and it's like cool okay I guess I gotta do what I'm doing and hope it works exactly especially when it's like the guitar solo time and everyone else is now in the control room they're not playing themselves and it's just me in the big kind of you know studio room trying to you know lay it down and yeah the magic the magic yeah. um <laughs> okay album six yes how do you find after all of these years and so many releases that you battle when everyone inevitably hits the creative wall mm -hmm. when it's like it's really daunting because i've got i want to do a sixth record but I, how do i pull that out of the well like wh how do you combat that well i had uh crazy unexpected secret weapon with this record which is that um, I got married about six or seven years ago and discovered that this person this fabulous person is a poet and um, didn't know it didn't know it straight away but it was revealed to me and uh, we started writing together about 18 months ago uh, uh, you got the cheat code I totally got the cheat code and I've tried writing with so many different people and it's like it's never really resulted in anything I wanted to record but because I don't know something magic happened and um, he brings this very like ethereal um, almost psychedelic uh, lyricism whereas I'm much more plain spoken and, sure. and direct and I think I don't know something about how we work together the it's just yeah, yeah yeah um so this record of all the records i've ever made was the easiest to write and not, not easy but like the most like like joyful and kind of flo flowing if that makes any sense sure. yeah that's never the case everyone like reaches album six and they're like can we still do it I hope so. So to have that, and to, again, like it's a cheat code because it's like I actually finally found someone I can collaborate with, and like there's that kinship, like that that weird musical kindred spirits thing. So was he involved in the studio, or was it? He ended up coming very last minute because we were f suddenly like, oh, he should be. I mean, you should be there. He should be there. Um, and it was great to have him. He he made us snacks and would make us food, which you totally need in the studio because you forget to eat, yes. and then you get like really upset and 
lose have a meltdown. Why am I cranky? Again? Yeah, not tracking properly. exactly. So um, yeah, and and we there were a few songs that we were like doing final touches on sure. lyrically um, right at the end. So it was a total dream. It was a really enjoyable experience. And you know, every record is fraught. It's there's so much anxiety. There's so much expectation. You've got this one chance to kind of lay it down in you know two a week or two weeks or whatever. Sure. Um, but of all of the experiences I've had in the studio, and I think too, having been in the studio a lot over the years, um, I felt like some, you know, some confidence, like some, and some sense of being able to let um, th that collaboration between myself and my long-term drummer Aaron Sydney, and then Ben Tanner on the controls and keys and producing, like actually um, happen rather than rigidly trying to control it, mm. like I have in the past, I think. So with that vibrant energy from the studio, so how are you going to take those songs to the stage? What's next? Yeah, well, I just did this really fun tour in the States, um, pre-release of the album, uh, with Jen Cloa, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, the two, the, the two bands on the road together. And I went as a trio um, with my American band, uh, having never played a lot of these songs live before and thinking that, you know, there's a lot on the record and that it would need to be maybe a four piece or a five piece, but um, but like distilling the songs down to a trio and actually at the end of the tour going like, I think we should play as a trio. Like this is, at least for this initial stages yeah. of, of the release, um, it works so well and, and, it, and it really is about discovering, well, what are the, what's the essence of this song? You know, we've got all this, extra stuff on the record but if you distill it down does it work and and where's its soul coming from and I think we found we found that and I'm feeling good about it. a trio yeah a power trio exactly all right thank you very very kindly for your time thank you for your time